first we went down uh, to uh, feel a little about how it could be if the city is overfilled with water. So we walked and went by bike in 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 the small pool, and uh, we felt how it was to to, to live that way. one workshop out of four so we're gonna do it uh, three times more and then we're gonna compare the results and we're gonna have different groups every time so it's really interesting to see how they uh, work with the issue in uh, different ways. Uh, we went out to the big uh, crossing or uh, roundabout um, intersection uh, outside and uh, we had with us small swimming pools and we filled them with water and put two chairs in each swimming pool and uh, we had a pair of wellies uh, so we asked people to come into our pool and we had an interview with them and asked them about uh, how they thought that the water or the flooding in Gothenburg would affect their lives um, and then we wrote it up on a whiteboard and uh, kind of collected all the, all the data. out of four and uh, last uh, this time we have um, developed the workshop in the way that we have narrowed down the uh, the problems and the solutions so that the solutions um, will be more uh, connected to the daily life uh, that concerns these young people. So since the last workshop we've chosen to focus the work very much more on the everyday situations uh, allowing the teenagers to work very much more with precise and specific questions. That way, that way we will get to much more, well, solution-oriented, uh, a much more solution-oriented process as a whole, actually. And we believe that we give give the teenagers tools for working with similar projects in the future as well, which means that they will actually bring a lot of things and a lot of new knowledges and tools with them from this workshop? Um, it's a lot of things about transportation. We're talking about how to uh, keep our daily, uh, like what we do today, and then um, make it into something that works in water as well, like biking that we just talked about. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a lot about transportation. My name is Jacob and my group have developed Bike and Flow. It's a result of the problem where, where, if, where how to bike in a, a city that's flooded. And the solution of course is Bike and Flow. And it's a prototype bike right now. Uh, we use an electric driven battery to uh, drive with a propeller that makes it easier to go in water. And also you're much, much higher up than regular bikes who don't get wet. Um, and that's the purpose, to go all over the city, wherever you want, to streets that are not flooded, that, are is, that is flooded, and so on. The people that we wanted to reach out to is people that's hardworking, have busy lives, want to get somewhere fast without a car or a boat or something that's dangerous for the environment. And and also people that want to stay fit because it's like regular bicycling so you get healthy. Hello, my name is Edwin. My group and I have made an invention to solve the problem with garbage escaping the trash cans in uh, the traditional trash bins. And our solution is a floating trash can that is adaptable. Uh, as the water rises in Gothenburg, uh, so will the trash cans, so that will allow the people to uh, throw their tra uh, trash in the trash bins and it will also, also prevent the trash to get out of the trash bin when the water rises. Uh, so this uh, trash can has um, uh, an opening with the uh, plastic platforms on it uh, that when you, when you put something uh, garbage in it, uh, the, high, uh, the garbage will go in and it will stay in because it will lock the hole and so that nothing else uh, goes, comes out of the trash can. Uh, 
so this is also a hydrophobic surface that will allow it to be waterproof. Um, and our trash can is also um, spinnable and environmental uh, as it has four parts where you can put metal in one trash can and paper in the other so it's good for the environment as well.